Hi YouTube, welcome to the latest video coming to you from all things Hitman. My name is Reaper1. This Hitman lore topic was voted by you some time ago. You selected the Delgados as the next focus for this series, so we are going to do exactly that. We all know who the Delgados are. They are the archetypal, rapacious and ruthless South American drug cartel within the Hitman universe. But that generalised label is only hitting the tip of the iceberg. They are a calculating, methodical and barbarous enterprise of organised crime that has developed incomprehensibly far-flung connections and influence all across the globe. Their vast outreach and prevalence is evident by the sheer frequency with which they seem to arise throughout 47's killing grounds all across the series. This video will be exploring just exactly who the Delgados are as an organisation, what may have inspired their origin, and just what role the cartel and their individual counterparts play within the confoundedly complex world of Agent 47. Why don't we begin with their genesis? The exact founding of the Delgado cartel remains unknown, but it is revealed in Hitman 2 that it was established as a clandestine cocaine distribution network at some point in the late 20th century by one Don Delgado in Colombia. Their primary jungle manufacturing operation was thwarted and destroyed in the 1990s after a government crackdown. Don Delgado went down with it, survived only by his wife and two young sons, Rico and Hector. The Delgado cartel was eventually reinstated by his brother, Fernando Delgado. By 2004, Fernando had set up a new base of operations at his vineyard in Chile. This is, as we all know, where 47 first entered the Delgado frame. Why did IO Interactive introduce such an organisation as the Delgados to the world of 47? One reason might be that the stereotypical South American drug cartel has been a prominent fixture of the franchise since the very first entry, codename 47. This fixture came in the form of Pablo Belisario Ocoa, the psychopathic Colombian drug lord, target and one of five forefathers of Agent 47. Pablo himself was inspired by Hispanic gangsters of popular culture such as Tony Montana. Say hello to my little friend. It has never been confirmed but it is strongly suggested that the Colombian levels from Codename 47, the inadvertent influence for the placement of the Delgados in Blood Money, the fourth Hitman entry. Despite there currently not being any concrete narrative link between Pablo and the Delgados, both levels contain parallel themes, similar settings, and subtle motifs. South American organized crime obviously also forms an ever-increasing intrinsic component of Western popular culture. This may also have been a contributing factor to their introduction within the Hitman series. As previously mentioned, Agent 47 first encounters the Delgados in the Blood Money mission A Vintage Year. It is February 2004, and Fernando Delgado is well into his successive reign as Delgado leader. Using his award-winning Chilean wine label as a front for his cocaine business, Fernando lives a quiet existence in his jungle manor, fulfilling his delusions of grandeur and aristocratic superiority through his collection of fine antiquities and talents as a cellist. All the while, he maintains a disparaging eye on his highly impulsive and overly juvenile adult son, Manuel, whom ironically fancies himself as a worthy heir to his father's cocaine business. It seems they have a fairly modest drug operation in play, in contrast to their future counterparts in Hitman 2. Fernando certainly seems more cautious than his nephew Rico, hiding any sign of illegally acquired wealth behind his vineyard, whereas the audacious Rico openly has cash overflowing from every nook and cranny of his abode. Working for an unknown client, 47 promptly dispatches both Fernando and Manuel to make it appear like a gang hit. Canonically, it is later revealed in Hitman 2 that he's dispensed with both of them using accident kills. My uncle and his son established the roots of my empire. A Chilean cartel based in his vineyard until one day when someone came along and killed them. The authorities called it a freak accident. <laughs> Liars. All of them. I will have my revenge. The Delgados do not play a central role in the Blood Money narrative. They are simply used as an exposition piece to establish 47 as a covert, world-renowned assassin in both the eyes of the player and the newly introduced antagonist, head of the franchise Jack Alexander, and journalist Rick Henderson. But as the series continues, 
the Delgados slowly evolved to become a much more central narrative device of the Hitman saga. This is evident in that they have either featured prominently or been mentioned in passing in every Hitman entry since Blood Money. For instance, they make a fleeting cameo on radio in Hitman Absolution as the King of Chinatown's top cocaine supplier. That crime lord who just bought the farm, the so-called King of Chinatown, he was Delgado's main buyer, not just here, but globally. By the time Hitman 2016 rolled around, it became extremely clear that the Delgados had expanded from a furtive Chilean cocaine business into an impregnable and dangerously powerful international crime ring. They were rubbing shoulders with the worst of the world's elite, such as Dahlia Margolis as Iago. Ms. Martinez, I hear our last deal paid off. My employers are very pleased. Because of your intel, the glory of the Delgado cartel has been restored. Whispering in dark corners and brokering shady deals in order to obliterate anyone that is sabotaging their ever-expanding operation, even a world leader. When the Delgado drug cartel shot down the plane of President Hernandez and his family, Iago provided the classified flight plans. Io even threw in the same seaplane motif to highlight their ever-increasing significance within the overarching story. Caruso seaplane is back from the repair station. It's not fucking Rico Delgado. The Delgado cartel make their most notable appearance since Blood Money in Hitman 2's The Three-Headed Serpent, 2019. It is 15 years since Fernando and Manuel's demise, and the Delgados are back in the flesh, no longer represented by throwaway NPC comments or evasive motifs. ICA, namely Diana and 47, have allied themselves with Providence in waging war against the incalculable Shadow Client and his devout militia. Providence intel suggests that their common enemy is using the Delgado International National drug smuggling network to stealthily maneuver their paramilitary personnel. By eliminating the three heads of the cartel, ICA figure that they can heavily impede the militia's efforts in carrying out further attacks on Providence operatives. Of course, there is no other man for the job. 47 is sent into the lion's den, once again located in Colombia. The Delgado cartel is now headed by the original founder's eldest son, Rico Delgado, a gifted businessman and natural born leader, a true sociopath with his own museum, willing to annihilate absolutely anyone or anything that obstructs his efforts in achieving world domination of the cocaine trade. Rico has moved heaven and earth to enable the once dreaded cartel to rise from the ashes. His childhood friend, Andrea Martinez, has used her marketing expertise, charm and intellect to win over a small contingent of world leaders and high-ranking lawmakers in order to open borders and build a global network of free-flowing distribution for their product. Whilst his uncle's old chemist, Jorge Franco, has been conjuring up a newly enhanced production line of crystallized cocaine. With a lavishly constructed jungle mansion, an underground launch site for his smuggling operation, a hugely expanded manufacturing plant, a whole town under his thumb, and a small private army, not to mention his two irreplaceable subordinates in tow, Rico has built a multi-billion dollar criminal conglomerate. It seems Providence, and their backing of his arch rival, the Moreno Cartel. This is undoubtedly an escalation in the bloody conflict between the Delgado Cartel and their northern rival, the Moreno Cartel. Are the only real threats to his onslaught toward world domination. No wonder he opened up his smuggling routes to Lucas Gray. Under Rico's rule, the Delgados have also tried their hand at other criminal activity, such as forging travel documents for Lucas Gray's militia. Colorado. I spent three weeks creating documents. For instance, it was they who allowed Penelope Graves to defect from Interpol and travel completely under the radar straight to her new comrades in Colorado. Passport provided through Delgado and that vanisher guy. My head looked clean. 47 can do some snooping before taking out his targets. It seems Lucas Gray promised Rico to reveal the identity of the assassin of his dear uncle and cousin in return for access to his distribution network. Luckily for 47, they are still in the process of finalizing the deal. Now where's my information? More or less will not help our cause, Rico. Your patience will be rewarded, but I need you to deliver on your end of the deal first. Finish the sub and I will give you the names you desire. Well, I don't think you fully understand here. This is a matter of honor. When you brought me evidence of foul play in the case of my uncle's death, you started something I need to finish. I understand. You will have your revenge in due time. 47 can also meander around Rico's personal in Mansion Museum and eavesdrop as Rico himself provides a personal tour for one of his faithful bodyguards. The museum mostly hosts egotistic trophies only Rico would find at all interesting. However, 
there are a couple of family heirlooms that represent his family's colourful past. He keeps a bottle of Fernando's best-selling wine as a fitting symbol of his forebear's past dynastic achievements. He also proudly keeps his late uncle's cello, a stark reminder of his family's murders. Rico is confident he is near to discovering the identity of the assailant because of his close dealings with Lucas Gray. Little does he know, the killer ironically stands right in his midst. Once 47 has dealt a lethal blow to the three serpent heads of the Delgado cartel, the organisation is left utterly crippled. They are leaderless, have lost all crucial international contacts, and their production line has ground to a complete halt. And who is left to pick up the pieces? The Delgado family is yet to reveal a statement about the death of their patron, but it is likely that Hector Delgado will take over the crippled organisation. Rico's younger brother, Hector, a hopeless romantic and confounded fool. The Delgado dynastic golden age is well and truly over. The cartel will be fortunate enough to become even a shell of its former glory under Hector's feeble governance. ICA ultimately achieved what they wanted. The Shadow Client's international travel network has collapsed. But this matters not, for he has already procured the key he needs to bring 47 into the fold of the war he wages against Providence, the antidote from the Johannesburg Ether Lab that will return 47's suppressed memories of Janus. The Delgado chapter in the Hitman universe is now seemingly closed. They brought a barbarous and exotic flair to the series that no other criminal enterprise could have. Moreover, they were instrumental in linking and consolidating the narratives of the differing entries with one another, thus creating some sense of continuity across the entire Hitman series. The jungle levels that hosted the Delgados helped realise the varied and vibrant world that 47 traverses on his many assignments. In addition to supplying some of the most despicable, yet memorable, targets we as the players have ever had the pleasure of dispensing with. Finally, they kept the player base in touch with that gritty underworld element of Hitman that did so much to spawn the formula of the series in Codename 47. The question of the Delgados returning prominently in the future of the Hitman franchise remains to be seen. Whether they do or not, one thing is for sure, the Delgado dynasty will always hold a very special place in the series. The Hitman universe would not be quite the one we all know and love without them. That about does it for this one. If you enjoyed the video, please don't forget to leave a like and share it around. Every little bit helps. Please be sure to subscribe if you are new as well. I'd also love to hear any thoughts you may have in the comments. I'm now also accepting channel donations of any size through PayPal. Link is in the description. Donations are never expected, but if you do really enjoy this type of content, why not consider making a small donation? Videos of this sort do take days of research, scripting, recording and editing. Any tips kindly donated do huge amounts to motivate me to keep making videos of this caliber, especially since a channel of my size cannot run advertisements. But please don't feel compelled, only if you want to. Thank you again for watching. I look forward to covering much more Hitman lore with you in the future. Reaper 1, out. Please like, share, and subscribe if you enjoyed the video.